Okay, so today is finally the day that I tell you guys how I run my online business. Uh, quick disclaimer, I am not going to be discussing like taxes and the legal side of things and I'm also not going to be discussing like how you can make money to buy your supplies. Uh, this is purely going to be me telling you what I use, when I bought it, giving you tips that I've learned, etc, etc. So if you are looking for the more like financial and legal sort of advice, I am not a financial advisor. I'm barely figuring all that stuff out myself. So yeah, that is not what this video is. But I am actually going to start off listing all of my expenses and I'm only going to be touching on my sticker and print products because those are the items that I make here at home. All the pins and the keychains and all that other stuff I get manufactured so that stuff uh, tends to really just depend on what you're looking for. I'm just going to be discussing the things that I make in my home. Beginning with supplies. So I made a lit. I have my notes here. So if I look down a lot, that's why, because I have my notes. Another quick disclaimer. This is my expenses that I make now. My business has grown a lot more than when I first started. When I first started, I did not make all of these purchases at the same time, and I did not buy in the quantities that I buy now. So for example, maybe back then I would only buy like 100 sticker sheets versus now I have to buy a thousand sticker sheets to be able to keep up inventory so just keep that in mind there are many options for what you can purchase depending on the size of your business it's just that my business has grown since I first started so my expenses are obviously going to be higher so I broke it down into like one-time big purchases that I've made and then my supplies that I, that run out whether it's monthly weekly every three months whatever so for my one-time purchases I have my Cricut maker uh, which is essentially a cutting machine it can cut essentially anything and that's what I use to cut my stickers and sticker sheets that was $300 and I have two at this point but like I said my business has grown so I've needed another my printer is the Canon TS6220 and that was $70 I bought that at Best Buy I think that was my first purchase that I made towards my business and I still have the same printer it's not the best printer obviously it was $70 but it gets the job done and it has really great printing quality because it is a photo printer. I highly, highly, highly recommend you purchase a photo printer and an inkjet photo printer because inkjet and photo printers will give you like maximum vibrancy and allow you to achieve a higher level of quality for your stickers and prints. So yeah, and that it doesn't mean that it makes them more expensive. There's I bought one that was $70, but there are photo printers that are even cheaper than that. Next is my iPad which is the most expensive. Uh, my iPad Pro was $999, minus tax. I just looked up on Apple how much mine was with the specs and everything. That was basically $1,000. You do not need an iPad. I bought an iPad because I am not solely focused on running this online business. I want to be an illustrator, a digital illustrator, so that to me was a part of my career and all that so if you are not looking to be like a digital illustrator or anything you could easily get away with a tablet that you connect to your computer that's what i used before i had my ipad i used a wacom tablet and that was i think around like 50 dollars which is obviously nowhere close to a thousand dollars and of course my apple pencil uh for the ipad pro you do have to get the second generation one and that one is 129 dollars so those are all of my one-time purchases i bought my printer and my cricut machine at the same time i I used to have a Cricut Explore, which is a little bit cheaper than the Maker, but it broke on me and I didn't want to risk getting another Explore and it breaking on me again, so I just decided to upgrade and get the Maker, but I bought a Cricut machine and a printer at the same time. Here comes all of my supplies. Uh, this is a lot, so hang with me. So for sticker paper, I use two kinds of sticker paper. Both are from the brand Online Labels or uh, their website onlinelabels.com. I buy mine from Amazon because I can get it shipped in two days. So first I use the glossy sticker paper, the white glossy sticker paper, and I pay $412 for a thousand sheets. Again, you do not have to start your business off buying a thousand sheets of sticker paper. I just do that because Obviously, the more you buy, the more you save, and I end up going through that very quickly. So it's worth it for me, but they sell it in packs, I think, down to like 50. You can get 50, 100, 250, 500, and then 1,000. So that is just what I pay. For my matte 
sticker paper, uh, it is $432 for a thousand sheets. Printer ink is probably the most expensive for me. The printer ink for my printer is $68, which is basically the same amount that I paid for my printer. And that is just because it's a Canon Pixma printer and a photo printer, so it requires a lot of ink and it uses a lot of cartridges. I always keep at least like five or six packs stocked of printer ink just so I don't risk running out in the middle of producing product. But I would say, like for example, right now I'm prepping for a shop update. So I'm printing, I just finished printing all of the stickers that I need for the shop update. And I would say that was probably like 800 sheets. And I went through probably like two and a half packs of printer ink. So that's just to give you an estimate. Photo paper, so I purchase Photo, matte photo paper for my art prints. I will link the specific photo paper that I use down below because I think it's really great and it prints super high quality and the colors print on beautifully. And it is $28 for 50 sheets. Next, I use a lot of cardstock. So my cardstock that I use is $12 for 200 sheets and cardstock can be used to make your own backings for things. So for example, I have this Animal Crossing sticker pack and I have this backing card right here just to make it look more presentable. Instead of just throwing the stickers in like a plastic bag, you know, I designed this backing card and I printed it out, cut it, everything. So I print those on cardstock, also for my pins and such. I will use cardstock for that as well. I don't go through it very fast. It lasts me a very long time and $12 for 200 sheets I think is a great deal. Next, cellophane bags. I am trying to move away from using cellophane bags because it is an extra plastic that will be thrown away, but it's really great for you to start off with because they are so inexpensive. I'm just waiting to run out of them before I can move on to something else because you know there's no point in wasting it and just throwing it out just because I don't want to use them anymore. It, the price will depend on the size that you need. Everybody needs different sizes for their products. Just depends on your product. To give you an estimate, I have some three by five inch cellophane bags and they were $17 for a thousand bags. Again, you don't need to buy a thousand bags to start off with. Next, I also use vellum envelopes, which are essentially like this, that see-through matte paper envelope. It just looks really nice and that's what I use to put all the products into that someone purchases just to keep it looking nice keep it all protected and together because I don't want it to like get scattered for like presentation and stuff. And again, the price will depend on the size that you require. Um, just to give you an estimate, I use A7 envelopes as one of my sizes and those are $11 for a pack of 25. This is kind of optional, but I use tissue paper to wrap just finally wrap everything and put a little sticker on it. Again, for presentation, you don't have to do that, definitely. The tissue paper that I bought at the beginning has still lasted me. I cut mine into three sections just to save myself tissue paper. I don't need to put an entire huge sheet for like a tiny thing this big. But mine was $5 for 10 sheets, just if you're interested. Next, shipping stuff, mailers. I use flat mailers because most of my products are paper products, but I am selling tote in this next update and for those I just use any regular mailer. But for paper products, you definitely want to use flat mailers so that when it's traveling through the mailing system, it doesn't get bent or anything and I haven't had any issues with it bending or any products being damaged. So yeah, again, size depends on your product. I have some six by eight mailers and those were $24 for a hundred mailers. And then just an extra cost that I remembered was packing tape and my packing tape refills are $11 for six rolls. I tend to go through packing tape really quickly. It actually runs out a lot faster than you would think. Next, I have all of my subscriptions that I have to keep my business running. To ship my items, I use ShipStation and I'll talk about it a little bit later. ShipStation, I use the 500 sales a month plan and that is $29 a month. For your website, if you plan on having your own website and not selling on Etsy, again, you don't have to start off like this, but I do have my own website. You do have to pay for the domain and a domain is essentially like what your website is called, what people type in to get to your website. So mine, for example, is palomathepeach.com. That is the domain and that is 
$20 a year. A domain will always start at $20 a year depending on the demand of that domain. The price will go higher. So if it's a domain that is in very high demand or very popular, it could go up to like $1,000. But mine is $20 a year. Next is Squarespace. And I've had Squarespace for so long that I don't even remember the plan that I picked, but it was probably like small business plan because I do sell products on there. And that is $32 a month. Now, to give you guys an estimate for what I pay for shipping, I pay, it depends on the location, I ship from Texas within the United States. I haven't started shipping internationally yet due to just the pandemic and everything, I don't want to risk lost mail or delays. So again, it depends on where it's going within the US, but approximately the average is about $3.50 is what I have been paying for shipping. I used to do media mail and that used to be a lot cheaper, but I have upgraded to first class mail because uh, the delays with media mail were just too long. So first class mail is a little bit more expensive. And I do have a PO box just because I'm not comfortable with people everywhere knowing exactly where I live so I did open up a PO box at a postal center about like 20 minutes from my house and that is approximately $80 every six months so $160 a year for me again that's gonna depend on like your postal office I feel like they're all different so that is all of my costs let's add them up so for my one-time purchases they were $1,498 but that is a one-time purchase it's not like my iPad is gonna be breaking every two months and I need to buy a new one one-time purchases so for reoccurring payments I spend a total of $1,310 this does not mean that I pay this monthly weekly whatever again it's going to depend on your business and what it demands but i just buy each product as it starts to run out for me i do not spend a thousand three hundred dollars every month on my business again like i said it, it just depends how fast something runs out for me things I feel like tend to run out at a pretty normal rate. I would say that only my mailers and my printer ink are something maybe that I have to constantly be buying, but everything else tends to last me a fairly long amount of time. I can't give you advice on how much to buy. You have to gauge how much you think you're going to sell and how much you're willing to make and then you can decide how much to purchase. So let's talk about shipping because shipping was something that was probably the most confusing for me. Um, so like I said, I use the service ShipStation and essentially I am gonna be talking in the context of Squarespace. I don't know if it connects to other website providers. I would assume that it does. But uh, yeah, I'm just gonna be discussing in the context of Squarespace. So ShipStation is a shipping service and you can pick from a lot of different plans. I, like I said, have the plan that allows you to ship up to 500 orders a month. I started off with the smallest plan, which was up to 50 orders a month and is $9.99 a month. But I surpassed that, I make over 50 sales a month, so. Now I have to pay $30 a month. It's really great because you connect it to your Squarespace and Squarespace already has its own commerce and like payment portal thing. It's already set up for you. So that's really great. You just have to connect ShipStation to your Squarespace website and it'll show you on there. Again, I'm not here to like give you guys tutorials and show you exactly how to do things. I'm just telling you what I use. So essentially, it'll show you how to connect those two and every time that someone purchases something on your website, it will automatically be sent to ShipStation and it'll pop up under um, awaiting shipment orders and you just double click on it It'll show you the items that they ordered and it'll already have the address and everything typed in there and you just have to choose what mailing service, uh, the weight of your order, all that, submit that. It'll give you the price of the shipping label and then boom, you print it out. It's very easy. I know a lot of people just do like envelopes with stamps. I think that's great to start off with if you are a very small business and you know don't wanna be paying a certain subscription every month for a shipping service. You can do stamps. I think it's the same throughout the US, but in the US, I think I bought 20 stamps for $15, and that's kind of ridiculous because to ship out orders like this, you have to use like two or three stamps anyways. So yeah, but again, if you have a smaller business and it works out better for you financially, by all means, do it. Let's talk about Squarespace. I get a lot of questions about how I made my website. I use Squarespace. Uh, this video is not sponsored by them. I know it may seem like that, and I actually do have sponsorships with Squarespace, but this is not sponsored by Squarespace. I have been using Squarespace for like a year and a half now, 
channel, believe it or not. I decided to start my business May of 2019, but I didn't actually launch it until November of 2019. So I got Squarespace in June of 2019. Essentially what Squarespace is, it is a website builder and very intuitive and it's very easy to use. This sounds so much like a sponsorship, but it's not sponsored. It's very easy to use if you are really good at coding and know a lot about web design. It allows you to do that, but if you have no idea how to make a website, it's very easy. There's already templates made for you and you can just pick one and it's your website is done. So yeah. It's Squarespace is great. Like I said, it has its own commerce portal and payment portal already built in there. You just have to, you know, follow the steps to set it up. It's very easy. I need to drink water. I've been talking so much and so fast. So now we're going to discuss what I have learned about running my business and tips and advice that I have for you. So firstly, I get a lot of questions on how to make sales and how to get your work out there. So I have been on YouTube for about like four to five years. So I have had an audience for about four to five years and I'm very lucky that I have been able to transition that audience into my art career and to support my shop. So that is how I have made sales. I know that is definitely not the case for everyone. I recommend starting off on Etsy because I know that Etsy has like a really great like marketing thing for sellers on there. I personally never sold on Etsy. I started straight away on my website because like I said, I already had an audience and everything, but Etsy essentially serves as something where people, it's like a marketplace where people can go and search for something and your product may pop up on their search results. So for example, if you were selling a pin that was a strawberry, someone can look up on Etsy, cute strawberry pin and your product might pop up, you know, depending how far down they go, whatever. So you have that like crutch from Etsy, but they do take away, I think about like 20 cents per sale that you make or something. Correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I don't know very much about Etsy because I never used it. Yeah, if you're not wanting to start on your own website, you should definitely do Etsy. I feel like most artists start off on there. So yeah, you could build an audience to get your products out there. <sighs> to build an audience on Instagram, you just have to consistently post and consistently post good quality content and by good quality content I do not mean you have to have perfect technical and artistic skills I do not mean you have to be able to paint as well as Leonardo da Vinci I am not saying that I'm saying that everything that you put out you have to make sure that you put your 100% into and that you are 100% proud of it you know I'm not saying make sure it's perfect because I don't think artists ever think that, that any of their products, their finished pieces are perfect, but you know, you can be like, I gave my all to this piece and I'm really proud of how it came out and I'm really proud of what I've learned from this piece as well. And again, that will attract people towards you because they'll be able to feel that, um, that honesty, you know? I, that was a really long rant. Let's get into the tips. You cannot be a weenie. I'm saying this now, you cannot be a weenie. There are many times where I have just broken down into tears out of frustration, out of sadness while I've been running this business. Now things are more stable and I've learned a lot and I'm able to avoid a lot of mistakes. But in the past, I have had meltdowns about mistakes that I've made. So you cannot be a weenie, you cannot give up easily because you are going to fail, you are going to make mistakes throughout your journey and you just have to keep going because if you don't make mistakes, you're never gonna learn, right? There are ways to avoid mistakes like doing your research, you know, you're watching this video, you're educating yourself, but it, making mistakes is unavoidable. I did the same thing and I still made a lot of mistakes. So yeah, there's just one, you have to be strong and you cannot give up. One more thing that I realized is that you probably should save two times more than what you think you need to start your business. So for example, let's say you're like, I need $500 to get enough supplies to start my art online business. I would save a thousand just because no matter how much research you do, there's going to be certain things that you won't learn until you make those errors when you're trying to start your business. Like I have wasted so much sticker paper and I feel like people don't talk about that but when you first start making stickers at home you waste so much paper like 
so much paper because this Cricut, I had no idea how to use my Cricut machine and I was just wasting and wasting and wasting paper. I didn't know anything about my printer settings. I was just wasting it. Printer ink, I was wasting printer ink. Yeah, there's a lot of mistakes to be made like I've said many times now. So just, just make sure to save more money than what you think you need because you're probably gonna end up needing more supplies just due to errors. I have also gotten a lot of questions about like outsourcing my stickers and prints and stuff. I've never used any of those services like uh, Sticker Mule and stuff. I, I don't have a personal experience with them. I have always made my stuff at home and I will tell you why I make my stuff at home. So essentially when you order from Sticker Mule, you're giving them a set quantity that you want. So for example, let's say you were like, I want 200 stickers of this one design. You then do that and then you have to wait for that one design. And I like being able to make as many stickers as I want whenever I want if I get a new idea, boom, I can go and make a sample right then and there. I don't have to ask for another company to send me a sticker. So that's just why I do it. I can definitely understand why at very large scales of stores, you would outsource. I am not to that point yet. I'm at the point where I can still make things at home. So yeah, that's my opinion on outsourcing for that. Last thing that I am going to address for this video is my manufacturers for like keychains and stuff. So I have found all my manufacturers on Alibaba. You are going to find the cheapest prices on Alibaba, but you just want to make sure that they are dependable. Alibaba will always put how many years a certain company has been doing what they do. I think my pin company has been a pin company for like 11 years and my keychain company has been working for like seven. So that means that they're very dependable and they're not going to scam you and they're going to produce good products for you. So yeah, I get all my manufacturers on Alibaba. Uh, eventually I want to move away from that though. I've heard that Zap for creatives is a good one, printed.com. I've also heard is a good one, but those tend to be a lot more expensive than Alibaba. Actually, this is the last thing. I forgot to mention this, how to price your items. So obviously you want to take into consideration if a product is manufactured, you want to take into consideration how much it costs you to get it done. So um, let's say you got enamel pins made and they cost you $2.50 to make one. Then you need to gauge how much shipping is gonna cost and if you add in extra stuff. So for example, I have the tissue paper and the vellum envelopes and like the whole presentation and everything, I add that into the price. So yeah, you wanna think about that when you're pricing and you, again, also you wanna make a profit. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor so I don't know exactly how much profit you should be making. I tend to aim towards like like 200% profit, 300% profit. I don't know, I kind of go off of how much it costs me to make it and what I see other artists selling it at so if an artist if I see an artist selling a keychain at $15 and another one selling it at $10 I'll probably put it at 12 just because that feels right so yeah you should definitely look at other people's stores to see how much you should price things so yeah that is this video if you have any questions that I left unanswered please leave them down below and I will try my best to answer them like I said I'm not gonna be answering like taxes or legal stuff just because I don't know anything about that I'm not the person to ask so yeah, but if you have any other questions I didn't answer, please leave them down below. I will try to answer. And if you see someone asking like a question that's already been answered, please, if you can, give them the answer because I don't always have time to answer repeated questions. But yeah, I really hope this was helpful. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.